It's somewhere around 6.45 on the 26th day of March 2011. Calvin Castine at the 8-Ball Billiards Cafe. Beautiful, just outside of beautiful downtown Plattsburgh. It's uh, the next round of this uh, tournament, our third installment. We have a possibility of uh, three sets um, and a possibility of two sets here. <coughs> they were in the loser's bracket. <coughs> the winner of this will advance back to the winner's bracket. The loser will be uh, eliminated and will get the third place trophy. Our competitors have faced each other earlier in the tournament. <coughs> it's Sean Martin who will be breaking and his opponent is Bill Barnaby. To get here today, Bill Barnaby defeated Rick Giro in the first game of the of the uh, tournament here, the finals. Maury Cotter lost to Sean Martin. So Sean Martin defeated Laurie, uh, Maury Cotter. <clears throat> and other action in the first round, uh, Dennis Velez lost to Stubby Kilburn. And Kevin Katz defeated Bill Sir Siever in a very fast-moving and entertaining match. In the second round, Barnaby and Martin went face-to-face, -face, and Martin defeated Barnaby. And when Katz and Kilburn went face-to-face, -face, Kilburn defeated, excuse me, Kilburn lost to Katz. Then Katz went on to defeat Martin, and Katz is awaiting the winner of this. <clears throat> so when Barnaby went down to the loser's bracket, he faced uh, Maury Cotter and defeated him. He then faced Dennis Velez and defeated him. This is Martin's first game out of the winner's bracket, so he has not had to come back through the loser's bracket. So the winner of this faces Kevin Katz. And that game there could be the championship game, unless the winner of this wins that first game, first match against uh, Ketz, then it would go to a deciding match. It's a double elimination tournament, and Ketz has yet to lose, so he has to lose twice. Everybody in the loser's bracket has obviously already lost once, so when you move back to the winner's bracket, you're going there on one leg. Sean Martin is playing for the last resort. He is from Plattsburgh. Uh, the last resort is, of course, in Rouse's Point. He was a finalist last year. Stubby Kilburn is, pl was playing for Armand's Place 2 in Rouse's Point. He is from Alsable Forks. He has been here. He finished second in uh, 2006. And he also was a finalist in 2008. Bill Barnaby who was playing against Martin here representing American Legion Post 912 from Rouse's Point. Uh, he's from Dannemora. This is a first-time finalist. Uh, Kevin Ketz, who is awaiting the winner of this, is uh, from Cohoes, New York. He's representing Time Served, and he is last year's champion. And then once he won the championship in this tournament, he stuck around and won the nine ball championship too here at, at the eight ball billiards. Uh, among those eliminated, uh, Dennis Velez, who was playing for cocktails. He's from Plattsburgh. He was a first time for, for analyst. Uh, Maury Cotter, who went down, he's from Keysville, went down to Comstock and qualified down there at, at uh, one of the two tournaments uh, held at time served. And he is a first time finalist. Rick Giro from uh, Friendly Tavern, which I, I think is in the Keysville area, but I don't get around much anymore, so I'm not sure. He's from Ellenburg. He was a finalist in 2000. Uh, finished second in 2003. 
He was a finalist and uh, champion in 2004, finalist in 2005, finished third in 2006, and was a finalist in 2010. So he's got the most experience. And Martin looks like he took that first game while we were busy chatting here. He quickly went through the through that and wrapped it up. Uh, Bill Seaver, who was also eliminated, he's from Brookies Pub, which I think is again from that Keysville area. Uh, he's from Beekman Town. He was a finalist in 94, 98, 2000, 2003, and 2007. So his uh, stay here in the uh, final eight it goes all the way back to uh, 17 years ago and this is the 19th tournament so he probably was a finalist in the second year of the tournament um, second or third year so that's what's happened thus far and right now we've got Sean Martin leading Bill Barnaby by a one to nothing margin they played a three out of five and uh, Winner again will go to the finals. It's approaching 7 p.m. 6:54. Going to my clock here. And taping since 9 o'clock this morning. We did three basketball games, uh, youth league tournament games at uh, Northeastern Clinton, and came down here for a 1 o'clock start. Well, we've gone from 1 till seven thus far here and uh, three and a half hours of taping before we got here. Oh, it's another full day. This is viewer supported local television if you appreciate the variety of coverage that we provide to the world now that we're on the internet, but more importantly to our local area. This is viewer supported and we would appreciate any support, any and all support. We had somebody recently send us uh, through PayPal a dollar contribution, so out of that we get 67 cents. We kept it. We didn't send it back. Said it was too small. We, we took that 67 cents. But uh, we like it even more when people send us a hundred or a couple hundred or, or more. Martin. Shooting the low ball, uh, high balls, shooting the, the nine. Tournament director, of course, is Jay Montpelier. We started doing this tournament back as part of the Northern Tier Chamber of Commerce Winter Weekend. Back then, he was uh, rooted on Route 9 in Champlain. We have his finals there. Bob Venn, uh, who used to have a pool hall in Shay-Z when he was in college, volunteer to cover those first few tournaments. And when he passed on in 1997, his son Tom Venn picked it up and uh, carried on the uh, the tradition for a year or two or three, I'm not sure if he did two or three years, but he quickly found that it wasn't as much fun as he thought it would be. He would tie himself up on a Saturday or Sunday all day. Well, we appreciate the, the years that he did cover it. So then he decided uh, to find something else to do with his time. We, we started covering it. Looks like Martin has come to play. Only to Katz, the defending champion. So he wants to get back there and play Mr. Katz again, and he is now leading 2 0 in his best of five. Martin will break. He remembers that uh, he was leading Katz two games to one. The last time he shot against Katz, Katz then proceeded to run the table. Then Ketz broke and ran the table again. So Martin went from being ahead 2-1 to losing it 3-2 without benefit of having taken another shot.
Martin scratch, so it's ball in hand for Barnaby. Barnaby has chosen the low balls. It was a nice sunny day today and it's March 26. However, temperature was 30 degrees when we arrived. We've done this tournament in April a few times when it was 60 degrees outside, sun shining. And I was saying, why in the heck am I in here watching these guys play pool when I could be out enjoying an early spring day? But it was a cool day, so it was easier to, to take. Shooting the three. Or the two. Three into the two. I think he did call the two, obviously. You have to call your ball and the pocket, so he, <clears throat> he called the two. Here's the uh, three in, and now the five. Get miss, make that. He's got two more. Put the seven down here and six along the bank. But first, he has to come over the top of the eight to shoot the five. His stick hit the eight ball. So that's a scratch. Well, without the benefit of the sunlight, uh, it's getting tough to see the players. If I light it up enough to see the players, it really washes out the pool table. Ball in hand for Martin. Hitting the 15, apparently. I'm going to shoot the 11. Put the 12 down this corner. Martin in a position to wrap this one up. The 13 along the bank. He's going to shoot the 10 ball on the side. A little draw to come back. Thirteen and pretty good position on the eight ball. Want to be ready to congratulate him, but he's got to make it first. <laughs> Sweeps Barnaby, and he'll advance to play the defending champion, the unbeaten Kevin Katz, who's busy over there having his lunch. Martin won the flip. This is a double elimination tournament. So Martin has to not only beat Katz twice, once, I should say, but he has to beat him twice 
So he has to take this first three out of five set and come back and do it all over again. Cat is unbeaten. His last victim was Sean Martin. But Martin, as we said a couple moments ago, gave Ketz a good good game, was leading 2-1 in that match, that set, before losing it 3-2. It was a good break, even the eight ball moves, but nothing goes in. Cue ball is hidden up in the corner. We'll see if Ketz has a good shot. He will try the... Uh, nope. Didn't try to get anything, really. He's at his best when he's aggressive and not timid. That's when he got in trouble when he played Martin. Uh, uh, last time they met, Ketz was trying to play defense instead of coming right at him. Well, still choice, Martin puts in the high ones. Like he's shooting the 13. And drops it in. in the corner. Nope. But the five is pretty well protected and the six will also be a tough shot for Cats. Here go after the ones he can get. Corner. The seven on the side. And that's what he's hoping to do there is use one of those shots to break things out. And that's exactly what happened. But he's still going to have to find a way to get that eight ball away. And that's what he did there as he hit the six in and knocked the 14 out of the way. He thinks he can get the five in. Martin's going to try to draw it back. He's very good at this type of shot. He's going to try to draw it back into the other side pocket. Cats will try to put the one in the side. He's got ball in hand, so he's going to go for the one that's hidden first. He's worried about his second shot and worried about that 12 up on the other corner, up on the other rail. And he takes care of both problems with one shot. Ideal position on the 12. But he's still going to have the 8 along the rail. Okay, now he wants 
to follow this one up. And don't know if he dares to hit it hard enough where he will knock that eight ball out. It may have been a year ago, I'm not sure, but the tournament was in, I'm guessing, a year ago. Although it could have been two years ago. Where a player ran a couple of balls, then asked for the marker, and put the eight ball in when he still had a ball left to shoot. question then became, was it up to the referees to tell him that he had a ball left to shoot? They didn't hand him the marker, he asked for it. He can hit the eight, obviously, but maybe not at the angle that he needs to send it down there. If he cuts it too fine, he is in danger of hitting the one ball first. Gave it a good shot. There's the marker. That's the pocket he was shooting for. Ketz has four balls to deal with before he worries about the eight. He's going to go for the five first in the corner. Ended up kind of a miscue, but he got both. Going to shoot the three. Excellent position on the one. And now shoot the eight ball. Defending champion. And again, it sounded like a bit of a miscue. But he sank it. He's going to change cues, I think. And we're going to go to game two in his best of five with Cats leading at 1 nothing. Well, at the record show, he did not go to get another cue stick. He went and took a bite out of his sandwich. <laughs> On the break in game two. Sank a high ball, but it's his choice. Doesn't have to take the high ones. He's going for the high balls. Fourteen way down. Thirteen on the side. Nine ball. Oh, they go eleven, twelve, eight, or twelve, eleven, eight. 12-11-8. And he went up a little too high. A little too much follow. I don't have the angle here. I think he can slice it. <clears throat> but he wants to be able to have an easier shot so he can get position on the eight ball. He sliced it, but not in the pocket. As it happens when you put 60% of your effort into getting position and 40% into making the shot. 
obviously not, scoop, not making the ball doesn't allow you anything to uh, take advantage of if you get position. So you got to make it first. Martin has decided to go for the one. Six back. His favorite shot? No, he's going to slice it in the corner. Fool me. Still has four to go. Seven in the side. Two, but yes, I don't think you get any angle at all on the three. But again, we can't always tell from our angle. Pretty good position on the three ball. And eight should be a routine shot. And we'll be tied at 1-1 one, one in this best of five. It's Martin's turn to serve. Martin's turn to serve. Right, Leslie Uggum's biggest hits. Looks like he sank two of the high balls. Uh, he'd like to continue with the high balls. Still his choice. And I believe if he doesn't make a ball here, it'll become Kets, Kets' choice. Can't tell what he's shooting. We'll find out when it goes in the pocket. If it goes in the pocket. <laughs> Hi, balls. That'll be three of them. But he scratched, so it's ball in hand for the defending champion, Kevin Getz. Now, because he scratched, even though he made it, it's still choice for Getz, apparently because Martin scratched when he made it. So it's just like he missed it.
And I think that's what he wanted to do, hide the pocket, hide the cue ball. Because he didn't have a shot on his other two. So although Martin has made three high balls, he's got the low balls. I guess he made one. And he did it without putting a 12 in. His five is probably the last one he'll worry about. Because right now it's providing some cover on the other two. Martin will shoot the two. Well, he broke out the high balls and didn't leave himself anything particularly good. His best bet is the three ball down in his corner. He's got to have straight rail. Really good. Uh, he's good at banking. Oh, he's going to put the five in the side, I guess. Well, at least that's the plan. Five in the side. Heck of a shot. That seems to be the type of shot he particularly enjoys and is very good at. Now that three into the four should be a certainty. Put the four in directly. And got excellent position on the three. <laughs> and he'll get excellent position on the eight ball. So he'll be a, moving to a two one advantage. No, Rich, Rich and I will be sitting on that side of the door. Two ones, Sean uh, Martin. Ketz found himself in the same situation last time these two players met. is acceptable. Bottom draw on the ball. And nothing goes. To heck with basketball. They need a 30 second shot clock in this game. Martin has been studying the table, studying the table. And finally. Six in the corner.
can he get by the 11 to hit the 7 at the correct angle to put it in the corner? We'll give it a shot. Yep, good shot. Two ball in the corner. Yeah, he can make the five, but then what? Try to draw the cue ball back. Nope. Not happy with his leave. Uh, three ball is right against the bank. And the four ball looks like it's a little ways away from the bank, but it's awfully close to that eight ball to get too fancy with. room over there. Again, our lack of angle on, the, on these shots uh, prevent us from knowing exactly what he's looking at. We could give each player a little helmet cam. I'm going to try to sneak the four by the eight. We'll see. Like he was trying to bank it into that corner, and if the cue ball hadn't gotten in the way, it would have went. But now it's ball in hand for Martin. Last time he was in a position like this, leading 2-1. Cats went on to run the table, broke, and ran the table again, and it was all over. Thirteen in the corner. Nine ball in the corner. Fifteen. Any eight, we're tied 2-2. Two, two. This time, Martin has the break, so he'll at least get a shot at it. He has to win this one, then come back and defeat Ketz again in another three out of five in this double elimination tournament. Well, he sank one. He sank a high ball. And again, it's his choice. Almost scratched, but he got two high balls instead. Doesn't have a particularly good angle on the 15.
Looks like he's going to come off the bank and try to slice the 15 in. Go on the other side of the 5. Oops. <laughs> didn't quite... Uh, didn't quite happen. He hit the 5 and then the, and the cue ball just kept right on sailing in. Went straight in. Didn't uh, bounce off the bank at all. Those ball in hand for the defending champion. We're tied 2 2 in this best of five. A double elimination tournament. Martin has lost once, and that happened to be against Ketz. Ketz has yet to lose. And the other three will not go by the 12. He's, he's gonna do it. Yeah, he's what I thought he was. Oh, no, he didn't. He just wanted to hide the ball. As long as uh, something hits the rail, if you don't put your ball in. Once the cue ball hits the ball, you're, one of your balls. If you don't put anything in, it has, has to. Uh, something has to hit the rail, the cue ball or any of the other balls. what you call a big league shot. That was one heck of a shot, but that's the type of shots that Martin is best at. Ten in the side, I believe. Now the 14, he likes to draw those back. That's not that tough a shot for him. He's giving it the big frown, but that's his favorite shot, so he doesn't fool anybody. Told you. Looks like he's hidden just enough that uh, you can't really see that eight ball. I'm guessing that he's not hidden, hidden enough that he can't come off the rail up there and hit the eight. But hitting it when it's out in the middle of the table is tough to get an angle where he's going to slice it. He'll have to hit it fairly hard if he's going to put it into this pocket down below here. I don't think he can come off the side rail to hit it. I think he has to go to that high bank up there. That's what he's looking at. Time to get the charts out. And he's put the marker down. The die is cast. If anybody can make it, Martin's the guy. And he'd better make it. Katz is going to have a wide open table if he doesn't. Good effort. Almost sliced it in the side. Now Katz will try to run it and wrap up the tournament. 
just enough on that, almost cut it too fine. Now he's ciphering which order he wants to take these five balls before shooting at the uh, eight. Goes for the four. Now the three. Uh, which one's he going for, the six or the seven, huh? Six or seven? Or two? Going for the seven. That's the one with a more a more angle than the six. Straight in on the two, if you're going almost straight in on the two. Follow the six down here, and if he makes it, he'll be in position for the eight. If he misses it, Martin will be in position for the eight. Cat's about to shoot the eight ball, and he does, and a three to two victory, and Kevin Katz reclaims his title as the eight ball billiards regional. Pool tournament champion against an uh, excellent player, Sean Martin. Certainly nothing to sneeze at. He lost to a great player. First time finalist this year, Bill Barnaby, the playing the tournament for a few years. He came in like second place last year in the hard box. And congratulations, Bill. Third place at the Lord. Bill Barnaby, third place. Second place, John's the past champion. He's been in the finals a couple times. He won the ninth ball last year. Three hundred dollars, second place. Congratulations, John. John Martin, second place. And our champion again this year, both two years in a row. Kevin Ketz, five hundred dollars for the trophy. Congratulations, John. Kevin Ketz. 500 bucks and a trophy. Makes the trip worthwhile. So that'll wrap it up. The 19th annual 8-Ball Billiards Regional Pool Tournament. Eight finalists have put in a full day. And so are we. It's 8 o'clock. Well, that's the way it was. Uh, congratulations to Jay Montpelier here at 8-Ball Billiards Cafe for putting on another fine tournament. We're coming at you from 8-Ball Billiards Cafe. Uh, just north of beautiful downtown Plattsburgh. Thanks for watching. And for those of you supporting viewers, supporting local television, hometown cable, win, lose, or draw, TV worthy of your support, hometown cable.